Hi, before I begin this tutorial, I wanted to touch on a few things. So I am doing this almost entirely scriptless. So I will tend to babble about things. So that's why you might see a few jump cuts from here or there. I really don't mean to. I just, this is the first time I've ever really done a voice tutorial. And I'm still fairly nervous about it. But I mean, it's for the people who want to know how to make custom content and for my patrons and people who follow me on Lover's Lab and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's all there is to it. Also, I will be showing cards of the music that's playing. There will be a care package in the description and there will be more tutorials to come. But for right now, I really do hope that you enjoy the tutorial and are able to follow along. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave a comment or send me an email, which will also be in the description. But I mean, that's about it. I hope that you enjoy the tutorial and that you show me your creations that you make if you do decide to make them. Anyway, thank you. So what we want to do is we want to start by importing an avatar in Marvelous Designer. So you go to File, you go to Add, then look all the way down and you see Avatar. Scroll, navigate to wherever you extracted the starter folder that I gave you and choose whatever body type that you want. I'm not going to go in depth on what each body type consists of, but for me, I prefer to use Eve Natural as Eve is the body that I started using after I moved on from using the Maxis body type, which is just the basic body that you see in The Sims 4. So when you find the body file type that you want, you want to click on either the OBJ file or the avatar file and hit open. Wait for it to load and you have your avatar in both the pattern window and the 3D view window. So from here we're going to start creating our garment, which I totally recommend that you get a reference for whatever you want to make as I recommended before. I won't bore you again with the details. So from up here we have our toolbar and to start we click on the polygon tool and then from here we can draw the shape of the shirt that we're going to make. And when you have the shape of your shirt what you want to do is instead of having to take the polygon tool and draw this side all over again you can click on this transform pattern tool or not the transform pattern tool, the, what you call it, edit pattern, or you can press Z to get it, and then you can click on the middle line, right click, and you can unfold or unfold with symmetric editing. When I'm making my own mesh, sometimes I don't use unfold with symmetrical editing, but for this tutorial, I'm going to go with symmetrical editing. So when we have both parts unfolded, if that's, if that's a word, what we want to do is now that we have the front we want to make a back for the shirt so that when we simulate it won't fall to the ground so we're going to do that and we're going to right click on our shirt again and this time we're going to hit copy then we're going to move over some and then we're going to paste and then our shirt should appear right next to this shirt when you make any edits in the 2d pattern window which i should have mentioned before It'll try to appear wherever you place it here. So like you see how I put it behind, besides the sim. So it appears besides the sim. Just, just a note. So you don't have any overlapping patterns or meshes just for both our sakes, you know? So we want to make this, this is going to be the back of the shirt, but it can't be the back of the shirt if it's next to the sim. So what I want to do is I want to make this the top view and I want to click on the shirt in the 2D pattern window or you can click on it here in the 3D window and I want to move it all the way behind the sim. It doesn't have to be perfect, but perfect to the point where it's not like in, in an outline disposition, you know, but um, I want it a little bit closer and then we have both the front and back of our shirt but before we get into the sewing part to put the shirt to actually put the shirt together you notice that this the lighter side is facing the back as opposed to how it should be facing outward instead of inward if that makes more sense what the normals are actually flipped 
or this shirt is backwards so short explanation normals in the sims 4 you can't see it's like having how can i explain this it's like having your shirt on inside out except if the inside of your shirt was invisible and people could see your back and stuff like that but i mean who can really honestly relate to that i don't know i'm just babbling but um, what we want to do is we want to flip the normals so we right click go to flip normal let that do what it does and then we have both sides facing correctly so no weird dark patterns on the back anymore and no weird nude sim back so anyway we want to move on the sewing and you can either click on the sewing tool up here and you can sew in the 3d window but i don't really i don't really have a preference unless you're like trying to do like precise sewing which you can do with the free sewing tool but right now we're just going to use a standard segment sewing but um what we want to do is we want to actually connect the shirt so we want to click on one of these sides and we want to move it to the side that would be adjacent from the side that we started with if that's the word I'm looking for so we click on it and with symmet since we have symmetrical editing enabled it's gonna sew both sides instead of a just one so we want to do the same with the shirt Other side and you want to make sure that these little lines are facing the right way so you don't get any twisted sewing like here let me show you so you don't you don't want to get any twisted sewing like this because if you do then it's the when you um simulate it's gonna end up flipping out and it's gonna like glitch everywhere so i'll show you and it's gonna do this and you don't want it to do that unless you're like trying to go for like a oddly specific look but this isn't the look i'm going for so i'm gonna go ahead and go up to edit and undo that and go to the edit sewing tool and reverse this again it doesn't matter which side you click on because we have symmetrical editing enabled so it's just going to do it for both sides instead of just the one and then we want to go to simulate so after that it's going to flop down on the sim and it's going to try and conform itself to her body you can see that some parts of the mesh are peeking through mainly her nipples but i we can fix that later trust me Anyway, what we want to do next is create the sleeves, and it's essentially the same in making the shirt. But for this one, I'm going to just click and hold on the polygon tool and go to rectangle. Or, as the hotkey suggests, I can just press S and I will have the rectangle tool enabled. So I'm just going to make a simple short sleeve shirt, you know, and then I'm going to go ahead and sew it and ro rotate this so when I simulate it doesn't look weird and to also check the sewing. I want to go ahead and reverse this. Or, no, okay. And then I'm just going to do the exact same thing that I did with the shirt. I might just end up fast forwarding through this part. <laughs> And I don't want to, I want to make sure that this isn't too far away so it doesn't just whip to her arm or to her body because that can cause some really odd clipping, especially with high polygon meshes, which I will explain in a minute, I promise. I'm sorry if I'm like saying a million things at once. I'm just <laughs> going with the flow. But I'm going to continue making, making this sleeve, you know. I'm gonna go ahead and slide these sleeves together that I can. Again, your mesh can have just a little bit of clipping when you're simulating, but with certain like positions, I wouldn't like certain types of meshes like for the sleeves, I wouldn't recommend the insane amount of clipping that I was trying to do, like you see how the sewing is going through the arm and with that the sleeve is just going to end up clipping through the arm and i don't want it to do that because when it does that it gets really hard to put the arm back inside of the sleeve so we got this right here we got our first sleeve and thank 
the heavens, we don't have to make another sleeve. We we can do is we can just copy that, right click over here in an empty space, hit mirror paste, the front, and then bada bing bada boom, we got our sleeve. See, look at that, crazy. So we just want to move the sleeve over to the arm, try to conform it as best I can so there's no weird clipping and the arm doesn't come flying out of the shirt and cause the mesh to fall on the floor like a dead fish or whatever. So these two points together. Again, checking to make sure that the sewing is right. Which is easy to do because you want to make sure the paint the bleh, the points are facing the right way again. And when we have that down, we can just simulate again. And then everything should simulate Semi decently, you know. Just want to pull this out a little bit, but we're gonna move on to the next part because essentially we essentially have our mesh. Our mesh is done, but we want to fix it so we don't have all this weird clipping like you see here. So what we want to do is we want to select our entire mesh and we want to go to Property Editor. What we want to do is we want to prevent this clipping that you see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to particle distance and it's set to 20 right now. I'm going to go over here so I can show you. This is the particle distance is essentially the number of polygons or faces and triangles that you have in your mesh. The higher the number, the less polygons that your mesh will have. The lower the number, the more polygons your mesh will have. I understand that can be kind of confusing. You got to repeat it in your head a few times to get it, but remember, high, low, low, high. That's even more confusing, and I am so sorry. From here, we can see that it's still sort of clipping through, and we have, but we have a lot more because it's not simulating right now, so that's why it still looks weird. Um, but we have more polygons than with with we have more polygons with ten than we had with twenty. The more polygons we have, the more it'll, the better it'll conform to the body. So we want to go ahead and hit simulate again, and I'm going to take this out of grid view, and we'll see that it's not clipping as badly as it was before. Because the more, like I said, the more polys that it has, the better it'll conform to the body, and the less weird it'll look. But another thing that I want to go over is this can go all the way down to one. And I don't recommend that you make the particle distance one. Firstly, because the sims can't handle it. Secondly, because y this program will more than likely crash or freeze and you'll have to force it close because it, j it, will, it'll, it, it can't handle. Only certain rigs can handle it having that many polygons. And you can already see that the simulation is lagging a, li a bit even with just the 10. And so I wouldn't recommend putting it below five, but even then I wouldn't even recommend five. For me, the magic spot is 10, so I'd recommend just using 10. But if you feel like you can push the limit, go for lower, although I don't recommend it. I'd The lowest I'd go is maybe seven or eight, but that's if I'm making like a really, a, a mesh that I wanna have really detailed, but nine times out of 10, I'm not gonna do that. And I don't wanna subject people who download my content to that. The next thing I want to go over is over here and you'll notice that with these folds you get these weird jagged lines. So again what you want to do is you want to select your entire mesh, go back to the amazing property editor, scroll all the way down and depending on what version you have you may or may not have a remesh down here. I know that remesh came with Marvelous Designer 9, but I don't remember it being in any of the previous versions that I had. So remesh helps the mesh conform better to the body when you're using the sliders in The Sims 4. You don't need to have your mesh remeshed, and I understand that sounds super confusing, but just, just follow me. You don't need to have it remeshed, but if you have it remeshed, I promise you it's gonna look a million times better in game when you're using the sliders with it for sure, for sure. So if you have this magic little option, you wanna go ahead and hit that box. Make sure all of your mesh is selected before you check this box. It's gonna do its thing again. 
and then down here you may it may look like nothing has changed but let's go ahead and simulate and you're gonna notice that these edges have smoothed out smooth out a heck of a lot if not all the way it's okay if you still have some jagged edging you know not everything's gonna be 100% perfect but it's a lot better than when we started out because when we started these this entire shirt was just made up of triangles and the sims sim clothing is made up of um, quads and having it made up of quads will make like I said make it conform better to the body when you're using sliders with it so and I'll go back to the grid view again and we're gonna see that it looks so smooth and so clean and so symmetrical almost and that's that's a good thing and the sims likes quads not triangles so you want to have your mesh like this instead of like the triangles aforementioned like i was just making going for a basic shirt and i have my basic shirt let me take this out of grid view so like i said we have our shirt again you can edit it to your liking you can use the inner line you can make lines and stuff like that i don't know if that's exciting to you right now but it's just edit it go go crazy do what you want experiment with this program especially if you've never used it before i promise you it's gonna be it's an amazing program to learn and to have in your your arsenal as i might say so i'm just curving out the points so they're not just sharp around the neck because shirts from me are sharp around the neck at least not the shirt Now that we have our shirt to our liking, what we want to do is import it into Blender. And this is going to be the final part of the Modelers Designer segment. But before we do that, sometimes, not all the time, these patterns will overlap in the UV map. And you're going to see what I'm talking about in a second. So from up here, we want to we see the big simulation button. What we want to do is we want to go to the arrow next to it, click on that, drop, and you'll see a drop down box. You, what you want to do is you want to go to UV Editor. And when that loads, you want to double, always double check this. Because sometimes these little patterns will overlap on each other. And, and when you take it in a blender, you, you want to pull your hair out trying to get them apart because that can be very tedious so always make sure you double check this so when you're done doing that you want to go back to simulation always make sure you simulate your shirt before you export it out return it to the front and then what you want to do is you want to go up to file it's not too big so you want to go up to file and then you're going to go to export export object so what you want to do is you want to make a little just a folder so you can have all your project files on Fa all your project files in so for this i'm just going to make it a. Uh, what i like to do is i like to name it what after the body types and then just the name but for this is tutorial that's not how you spell tutorial Shit. even stands for e-natural if you're wondering probably not so i just want to name this Tut shirt and then hit save now another box is going to pop up and then this export object box what we want to do is you want to make sure you have all select all patterns on go to select all avatars untick that make sure this is a single object unwelded thin unified uv coordinates should be ticked don't include hidden objects. Include internal shape should be ticked. Make sure this is set to M and the scale is set to 100. So it can fit on the sim body without you having to make adjustments to it. Leave all of this alone. You don't have to worry about any of this really. After axis convert, after scale, you don't have to worry about anything down here. So you just wanna go ahead and hit okay. And after that, your mesh is ready to be imported into Blender.
So give yourself a tiny little pat on the back, even though we're not entirely done. You have just made your first shirt in Marvelous Designer. And maybe it was your second or third, who knows? But congratulations, so let's move on. our mesh that we made in Marvelous Designer into Sims 4 Studio. So to start out, we want to import the body that we make, that we use, that we use to make our Marvelous Designer mesh into Blender. And then after that, we're going to import the actual shirt that we made. We want to go to File, Open, Navigate through the Care Package and find the Blender body templates that I provided, hopefully. I'm not entirely sure if I named it exactly that. If I didn't, I'll make a note when I'm editing the video. But since I used e, the um, E version 7 natural and it's just a shirt and it's not pants or a dress, which would be like, for example, you would use the bottom for pants, the full body for a dress maybe, but we just made a simple shirt. So we're just gonna use the top for Eve natural. Next, after we have this imported, we want to import our mess. So what we are going to do is we are going to go to, instead of going to open up here, we're gonna go all the way down to import. And this little drop down menu should follow shortly after. We're gonna import a wavefront object or a wavefront.obj. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. And we're going to navigate to where we put our shirt. So we're going to hit import object and it should automatically be fitted to your sim. You shouldn't have to move it around or anything and it should just be ready to be worked on right out the box. Firstly, before we do anything, once we have our mesh imported, we want to go over to this box right here and then we want to go to the object data, which is just like this little triangle with the points on on it and then we want to go down if these are open just you can go ahead and click them in the, and they'll close on their own but you want to go down to uv maps and you have to make sure that this is named how any other clothing item for the sims that would be named so if we go here so this is a sims or mesh even though it's a custom body but you'll see that it's named UV1 and it yep yeah, yeah, it's named UV0 and it has it also has a UV1 we need to make essentially the same exact UV maps and names so before we do anything else we want to double click this and name it UV0 which is the first UV map it doesn't have to be in all caps just regular UV underscore zero and after we do that we can click on our mesh you want to either press tab so it'll take you into edit mode or you can get into edit mode by going down where it says object mode and entering edit mode from right here so we can see that it looks exactly how it did in the pattern window in marvelous designer but before we do anything regarding the uv what we want to do is keep uv and the edit mode mesh selection in sync this is very important but from here what we want to do is we want to fit this into the sims 4 texture map on this part it can be a little bit tricky because if you're making certain kinds of meshes that require parts of the body to be seen the traditional join this with the default sims for body and just start deleting stuff won't always work for what you're using so you have to figure out creative ways around it and i'm going to go ahead and just show you how to do that without having to delete too much of the body especially if parts of the body are visible like if you look under like if i was in game and i was painting the camera down and this was deleted i would that would sort of you know just break immersion of the shirt and make it look bad and i don't want that to happen so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and keep as much of the body as possible for this shirt since you can sort of kind of see underneath it so like i said what i want to start doing is editing the uv map down so it fits here and before you just start tossing things on the uv map you have to be mindful the body itself it has 
its own UV map and you have to be very mindful of it. You can't, you don't want the UVs to overlap each other. I dare to say that you can't have the UV maps overlapping each other or else it'll look weird and the textures will look odd and it's just, it's, it's not, it's not worth the trouble. So you want to delete the parts that are covered by the shirt. You can't just delete parts of the UV map on the sim. Say I want to put parts of the shirt, the shirt sleeve, not the shirt itself. Um, for the parts of the body that the UV map is covering, or the shirt is covering, you can freely delete those, but you can't delete the parts that are visible. So you see how you can see this through the shirt and if I just say for instance deleted that you would notice that parts of the arm are gone and we don't want people to be able to see that in our shirt mesh so we want to only select the parts that are visible that aren't visible I mean underneath the shirt so when you have that you want to move from the UV map view into the 3d view press the delete key and delete not vertices but faces you can see how we've gotten rid of a part of the UV map and a part of the sim body and we can freely move our tutorial sleeves in this space because that sim that part of the UV map is no longer being occupied so it's free space where you can put your UV map for the shirt or object that you have made it's very important that you keep you try your best to keep your UV maps for your custom clothing in the correct areas like so I'm doing it this way because this part of the sim body won't be deleted because like I said you can pan down you can see parts under the shirt and stuff like that you can't I, you can't see the back so we would be free to delete that but I'm not gonna do that right now no, hold on let me open up my placement map so I can explain this just a little bit better it just essentially lets you know where the sims parts of the UV map that the sims 4 utilizes for its items so this would be pants this space is shoes this is a top this stuff makeup like makeup eye color stuff like that skin color that's where that would go this is for hair if you're making hair hats and everything over here is pretty much speaks for itself you know like I said try to keep what you're making in the space for what it's being made for because as I said before custom content there are other custom content creators and they like to utilize different parts of the map and you don't want your texture map overlapping with another creator's texture map even though it will happen because there are just so many creators and there's no way for you to know who's using what part of the map and that's totally okay so what we're i'm going to do is i'm going to click the tutorial shirt first then shift click sims for studio mesh one i'm going to move over here and i'm going to control j which is the hot key for join so now the tutorial shirt and the top the top of the sim body are one mesh now and you can see how everything with UV map is going that I explained is going into effect like how we deleted parts of the arms and now this is unoccupied space and we can have the sleeves up here or we could have the shirt up here just anywhere you want as long as it's not being occupied by the sim UVs itself never move the sims uv map never 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 because the sims texture is reliant on the uv map and if you move it then you end up here, let me show you where is it, where is it? say for instance i want to put something right here and i think it would be a good idea to maybe just sort of move this out of the way you see how this is causing the texture to freak out so that's why you never 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 want to move the sim the sims uvs you can move your custom content uvs but never move the sims uvs always keep the sims uvs intact so once we have that what we want to do next is have sims 4 studio open what we need is a reference so what we want to do is this is done loading cast we want to create a 3d mesh and we want to wait for this to load 
once this is done loading you're gonna see that you have all of this stuff but what we want to focus on is finding a reference that closely matches our mesh it doesn't have to be an exact match but it has to closely resemble what you're going for so say we're making a top right now so let me be and since this is just a just clothing top like it says we don't want to use anything else this is for adults it's for female human fine and since it's a short sleeve top, it would be somewhere resembling that, or maybe a crop top if I can find one. Yeah, essentially what we're doing is just finding a mesh that closely resembles ours so we can transfer weights. And I'm going to talk about that in a second, as soon as I get to that. So if you can, what you should do is just try to like make, your folder as organized as possible because I don't know about you but I just really hate having all the clutter so I'm gonna wait for this to make the package it's gonna load and it should pop up in a second here it is so what you want to do is you want to move from a textures tab and go to meshes we want to export this mesh again name and reference it's gonna instead of exporting a package it's going to be an exporting a dot blend file that we can import in here and transfer weights from now once that's imported we want to click over back into blender and go to append we want to navigate to where we had our reference imported I'm gonna sort that by date ref, ref, ref. object and if you see something like this where it says Sim Studio Mesh 1, Sim 4 Studio Mesh 2, Sim 4 Studio Mesh 3, you want to just select all of these and append from library. You can delete Bone Shape 1 and Rig 1, 2 because those aren't important or needed. They just, they're just clutter that's import, imported with the file for whatever reason. But um, once you have all of this in here, what you want to do is you want to click on each part of the reference that you imported and hit, we're going to join them together. Double check to make sure that you didn't accidentally join your custom mesh with the Sims 4 Studio mesh. And what I'm going to do is name this ref. Again, very creative names, I know, right? And what I'm going to do is go over here to Sims 4 Studio mesh 1 and I'm going to go to this little whatchamacallit or this wrench and I'm going to go to add a modifier from here I want to do a data transfer and when we have this data transfer window over here what we want to do is we want to start from source object so we want to use our reference we're going to you check face corner data we want to do UVs and this might take a minute and we want to go to UV1 and then UV1 again. And once it looks like this for your Sims 4 Studio Mesh, you want to hit apply. And it may look like that did nothing, but trust me, we're going to go over here back to the little triangle with the points in it and go back down to UV maps. So instead of being on the UV zero map, before you do this, you want to select your custom mesh like I have here. And in the UV map box, you want to scroll down, click UV one, and you're going to see that your mesh is now a part, has its own place on the UV one map. Now it's okay if it looks like this and it has these weird jagged lines, that's going to be a given with custom meshes. So if it looks like this, you've done, it's fine. There's nothing to worry about. You did what you're supposed to do as long as if when you have your own custom mesh highlighted, it's, it, you can see it on this UV1 map. So you did a good job. You got past this part. You don't have to worry about anything. So we're going to move on to the weights. Before we continue, I must always stress that it's important to save your your file naturally as with any project. And how I save my files is I save them in phases. 
um, after I do data transfer or UV arrangement, I like to save it as, if I do UV arrangement, I'll save the file as UV arrangement in case I have to come back to it or I mess something up. But for this, I'm just going to save it as a phase one because we got, after I save it as a phase one, that means that the data transfer is done for me at least. And I can go on to transferring the waste in another version of blender which we are about to do right now so always remember to save um you have to have both blender 2.79 and 2.70 you have to have blender 2.79 because you can't do data transfer in blender 2.70 but then you can't weight transfer in blender 2.79 but you can do it in 2.70 i'm sorry if that doesn't make sense i'll probably have a note up on the screen to better explain it than i am right now but since we're in the program, we're going to go ahead and open up our file. Navigate to your file and hit Blender Open. When you open it, you're going to see this error. File written by new Blender binary. Expect loss of data. You're not going to lose any data. So don't worry about this message. It, you're fine. Now, what we are going to do in Blender 2.70 is we are going to transfer the weights. So make sure that your ref is visible before you do this. And what you want to do is you always want to click the ref first. Then do shift click on your custom mesh or the Sims 4 Studio mesh that you have made. And you want to go down here where object mode is. But instead of going to edit mode, we are going to go all the way up here and go to weight paint. And from here, your mesh is going to turn blue or black, depending on the texture that you have on your top. If it turns black, it's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Just if it turns black, that means you probably have it in textured mode. So you want to take it into solid mode if you want it to be just like completely blue. So if it turns black, don't even worry about it. Even if it's still black and solid, don't even worry. It's fine. And in this little side window right here, you're going to see all these options. But the one that you want the most is transfer weights. You're going to click it. It might take a minute, but after it's done, it may look like it didn't do anything again as per usual with <laughs> this tutorial so far, but it has, and I'm going to show you right now. Okay. So in this, where you found the UV maps with the little triangle and the points, same as always, you are going to go to vertex groups. It should already be open if you hadn't accidentally closed it before, but, um, from here, if you zoom out, it may or may not show. You can see the weights on your mesh. And you can see how w the weights are essentially the sliders and how this will move with, well, this is part of how this custom mesh that you have made will move with the body in game and with the sliders and such. So you, it's very important that you have weights on your outfit or else it's not going to move with the sim. It's going to look weird. It's going to clip through the body and it's, it's not going to be good. So always just, what I like to do is I just like to do a quick rundown, double check. These colors should always be on the outside of the mesh, on the mesh, on the body here. For example, if you didn't do a proper rate transfer, here's what it will, would look like. So if you didn't do a proper rate transfer, the weights will be under the mesh not on the mesh itself and like i said if you do that then it's not going to move properly with the body and you have to go back and transfer the weights properly again so what we want to do is we want to go back up to file then save as and like i said i like to save it in phases so this is phase two after we transfer the weights and i just click save as blender file and we're done well not entirely we're done with the weights what we want to do is go back over to Blender 2.79, which I will do in a second here. Now from here, you see we have our newly weighted mesh in back in Blender 2.79. What we have to do next is vertex paint. And vertex painting is... Let me see if I can remember. Vertex painting determines how the mesh will move with the body when you use the sliders. So each category of object in CAS has certain vertex colors and I'm going to pull up a website that can hopefully help me explain this better than I could. Okay, so this is a guide to 
vertex painting in the sims 4 and like i said each cast object has its own vertex color so like i said this determines how your mesh will move the body so these colors are for hair and accessories dark green blue these are for clothing which is what we're going to be using we're going to be using is neon green and we don't have to worry about colors for objects because we're making clothes not objects so and you want to go back into blender and instead of messing with the color wheel in remember we're in vertex paint and you want to go up here to the line not the wheel you want to move over to hex and from here you want to control V paste that into this line and it should turn green in sync with this color and then when you have it set up like this what you want to do is you want to go down to paint and then set vertex colors and your mesh should turn green in par with the rest of the body but there's one more thing that we have to do is that when you're in cast and you're using the body sliders using different body shapes this can't be flushed to the body it can't be this close to the body and we don't want that so what we want to do is we want to take it into edit mode so you want to come down here to this little circle it's going to be grayed out because it's dis disabled but all you have to do is you have to click on this you want to go to connected and then you want to move it away a little bit from the body I want to do this for both the front and back so again I'm pressing S then pressing X so it'll move on the X axis and then after that I want to take it back then I just want to pan around and make sure it doesn't just look weird no parts clipping through make sure it's not an overly large gap and again you don't have to just you don't have to do it on the X or Y axis, you know, you can just press S and, it'll, and then just scale it again. And then you can just use these gizmos to move it around. But I mean, after that, we're essentially done. The next thing that we have to do is just import it into Sims 4 Studio. And a quick thing before we continue to import our mesh into the Sims 4 Studio, when you pan the camera down, you notice that you can see the grid view of your mesh and you can see right through it. Like I tried to explain earlier in my Marvelous Designer segment about the invisible back, you can see straight through the mesh and that's because it's only a one-sided mesh, there is not two. So what you want to do is for meshes like this, normally you can just how um you would traditionally do it is for example with the sleeves you can see up through the arm and you can see parts of the arm are deleted normally you wouldn't be able to see that in game though but from here what we can do front side what we can do is we can hit e to extrude the region well not down but inside and you would do that by pressing s and then you would see how it closed here and you can't see inside the shirt sleeve anymore and then you would go and do that for the other side because it's the traditional method of how you would normally close gaps to keep you from being able to see the inside of the mesh and how it's invisible but for a mesh like this like I said I want to have people be able to pan the camera down and be able to see inside of the shirt so instead of having to do the extruder in because if I did that and then it would end up looking incredibly odd because not every single mesh is going to be set up to be able to extrude region the clothes because you see how weird that looks that doesn't look normal so instead of doing this extruding the region what I want to do instead is just copy oh well we're gonna copy paste but we have to select this part of the mesh and then we have to press P we're going to separate this and then I'm going to copy and paste that. And then again, get rid of the bone shapes and the second rig. And I'm going to join the original part of the shirt back to the mesh. And let me go back like over I here said, and double check. 
you want to double tap or put it in tab use a to select everything and then what i want to do is i want to press spacebar then i'm going to type in this search bar flip normal so you don't even have to type it in all the way so i want to flip the normals you're going to see that it turns the grid inside out so that means that the faces that you can see are on the inside now instead of the outside and from here what i want to do is just join that together and then when we look at our mesh and pan around you notice that you can actually see both faces now instead of just the one now i'm going to save it as four because i like numbers apparently and i'm going to go ahead and go back into sims 4 studio and import our mesh now this is going to take a minute and i will pause the clip here and i will be back when it's done okay i'm back our mesh has finally been imported into the Sims 4 Studio, and when we look around, we notice that our mesh is sort of an odd color, sort of flesh colored and scary almost. So what was happening here is that our text, our mesh doesn't have any texture, and depending on where you put your um, content, your new mesh on the UV map, you may not even see it at all. And I'm here to tell you that everything's fine. It just needs a texture. That's probably why you can't see it or you're seeing this weird color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a quick shadow mask. So I may or may not have included this in the care package, but I have a custom set up texturing blender file that I use sometimes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and append our custom made mesh so we're gonna go down all the way we're gonna go to back to the uv image editor and we're going to click on this plus right here and you're gonna see the image box pop up and instead of normally it'll be 1024 in here but we're not gonna use that the size for default sims 4 texture maps is 2048 and then we're gonna go ahead and make sure Oswald's tick make sure this is black blank no 32 float and then we're gonna hit okay so and without getting all fancy i'm gonna go ahead and oh from here what you want to do is you want to go to the material it sort of looks like a little ball with the checker pattern inside of it and from here what i want to do is just sort of make a new texture or a new material and it'll pop up on here and you want to this should already be set but it should already be set to blender render if it isn't and then from here you want to move from solid to material and your shirt is going to turn white if you can you should take the time to experiment with the blender material thing because it's actually a very helpful tool i'm just going to use my default silk material that i have that may or may not be included i'm not entirely sure but um I'm going to use this default material that makes it look like it's silk and then I'm going to go to full render. You want to make sure that you untick select the active, have this set to clear and the margin set to 3. And then with your UV map, sometimes this won't like, sometimes when you try to bake you'll get an error where it's like oh well we couldn't find the picture that you wanted to use, or the image that you wanted to bake the texture to what you have to do is you have to actually go to the image that you made and then you have to hit bake and then hopefully it'll bake to the proper image like everything and so it did thank goodness and you have your quick texture I would say and in Blender, you can also make really good um, shadow maps too. What you can do is just AL, AL maps, not shadow maps, I'm dumb. And then you can just bake. And it essentially be the same thing, but just black and white. And then you can make your own custom textures in Photoshop. But go down to image once I when, it, when, when it's finished baking. And I'm going to do save as image. And I'm just going to rename this to one, although I should make a custom texture folder because like I said I like to stay organized 
and then I'm going to do save as image. Now once that's done, we want to move back over to Sims 4 Studio and we want to move back into the texture panel. And from here, you're going to see diffuse is already selected. We're going to go to import. And in your texture folder, take this off of DDS because we're using PNG and import the PNG. And this time it should actually import because I remembered to save it. I mean, essentially this is almost finished. From here, we you notice if you move back over to the mesh tab, you have these LODs, which are level of detail. And when you choose a different LOD level, you're going to notice that you don't have any the mesh the, your shirt mesh on any of the other logs so you can decimate your mesh accordingly you can make a decimated mesh mesh per level of detail but what i like to do is i just like to separate the shirt from the body and then just decimate it not so much so what it turns into like just unrecognizable garbage but like just enough so where I'm not wasting time just importing it into Sims 4 Studio so maybe down to like 6,000 polys and then I'll join it back again again always double check the UV one also by the way with um, decimating you're gonna end up losing a lot of the remesh that your or my realist designer had done so always use that on use that wisely that, which is why I say always take the particle distance into consideration before you import it into Blender and then into the Sims 4 Studio. Now that we have our levels of detail imported, when we zoom out in game, you're going to notice that when you zoom out in game, it's not it doesn't happen in Sims 4 Studio, but like I said, when you zoom out in game, the level of detail gets higher and your mesh becomes just it's just a, t a tactic to save on performance and even if you think people won't be able to see that you're you don't have your mesh imported because their camera will be so zoomed out they'll still be able to see and you always want to make sure that you have levels of detail imported always 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 every single level really once that's done we can go over to the category portion of this tutorial now from here, everything here is sort of like, it speaks for itself. It's essentially just the flags for where your content will appear in game with the filters on. So say that this is for, it's for an adult, it's for a teen, and it's for a young adult. It's not going to appear in the toddlers or child or elder section as with my content. And it's made for female, so by default, unless you have the feminine option, gone from the filter or removed from the filter you're not going to see it appear in mail so again if you have the filters on and you have red tick you're going to see this shirt in the filter and i think i mean it's essentially it ex it speaks for itself it explains itself and i'm sure you get it by now so again you just tick what you feel would be appropriate for your your mesh and remember to always apply all swatch to all swatches every single one that you pick that's all there is to categories now once we have our mesh imported and just essentially just worked out in the sims 4 studio the only th real things that are left to do are the swatch thumbnails which you can just um you right click and then it'll bring up the eyedropper and then you can just pick the color and that's as simple as that and for catalog thumbnail what i like to do is i just like to make pick a basic red so that way I can easily find the the shirt when I'm in when I'm in my game. Okay, so we're back in The Sims 4. Well, not back, but we're here in The Sims 4, and we are going to be testing our mesh. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit no on this, and sorry, give me a good. I'm going to sort by custom. And we have our mesh right here, so I'm gonna go ahead. And we have our mesh in the Sims 4, and it looks so nice and pretty, and it should shape with the body just fine. So like I said, we got the vertex paint, moved it away from the body, got it remeshed, and it looks pretty good. 
and so that brings our or my tutorial to a close and I want to really just thank you for following along and sticking around for as long as you have and if you're supporting me on patreon I thank you for that too throughout the course of my milestones I am going to continue this tutorial series as this is just the first out of I don't even remember how many tutorials I planned on making but they are definitely coming and when I hit the next milestone that I have I will be releasing a tutorial on how to make proper textures both in blender and um, Photoshop so stay tuned for that and thank you for following along again I really do appreciate it and I hope that you have a wonderful wonderful day thank you